thinking about is uh, just the, the genre and the register of academic writing versus the type of writing that you do. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, it's it's very academic writers kind of hold things very close to the vest, right? And they're unwilling to let them go mm -hmm. until they're absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have you know a demand for sort of like fast turnover of deliverables. Do you have any tips about how to sort of find your voice and get comfortable? Yeah, in that I do actually. I'm really good one. I forgot to mention this, so this is great. Um, so one of my tips is so we all have access to multiple registers, right? Like the academic register is not the only register we have, even if it's the one that we've developed the most practice in because you're in grad school and like you have all your friends are grad students and you do this. You have other registers. You have your like talking to children register, or you're talking to your dog register, um, or you're you know like I'm just so tired and I can't even handle this anymore, or you're like. Um, you know, so think about, so one of the things that I do when I'm writing an article and I'm like, man, this is getting pretentious, and I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, and like, what, like, <laughs> what's going on here, is I try to really consciously switch registers into a register that's like way too informal. Um, so I switch to like internet slang, like I'm not going to capitalize or punctuate anymore, I'm just going to like take it way too far in the other direction because it's easier to kind of tidy up and formalize a little bit a really casual register sometimes than it is to de-pretentious a too formal register. There's a verb for you, de-pretentious. Um, so, uh, so particularly if you've gotten stuck on this track of like, oh my god, the sentence it has now has three semicolons in it, like what am I even doing here? Um, you can think, okay, what if I put this into, into internet slang? What if I put this into like text speak? What if I put this into like, you know, just like really simple terms. What if I, you can run it through like the, um, there's a, a, Randall Monroe has written this book called Thing Explainer, which explains uh, complicated concepts using only the thousand most common words in English. And so it has a website where you can go and you can put your writing in and it'll highlight any word that you use that's not in those thousand most common words. Um, so you can use that as an exercise for like, how complicated is the vocabulary that they've used here? And like, can I get it down? into the, the thing explainer or the outdoor five type vocabulary. So there's a couple different tricks or you can like put it down, try to explain it to yourself verbally um, or like say like just like say to yourself why you're so annoyed with what you're writing first um, and like let that develop into oh maybe this is actually what I want to say. Um, sometimes I also use the like transcription feature, the audio transcription feature where you can just talk at your computer. Um, and that kind of puts you in a more in a more informal register, um, or like, what if I were going to have to tweet about this? Um, there's a variety of tricks to get your brain into like, oh yeah, I do have access to this other register. I don't have to write everything in words of like six syllables or more. Um, you know, like how can I how can I get get access to it again, even when I'm actually trying to explain these concepts that I'm used to encountering in the context of academic jargon. Yeah. 